Good morning, and welcome to Esperanza's first ever Virtual Hope Breakfast. We are thrilled to have hundreds of people from around the country with us today, and many more that will have an opportunity to view this recorded event. I'm Scott Hansen, president of HMA Public Relations. I'm a former TV sportscaster and have done work for various stations in and around the valley for some 30 years. I've got to tell you, it's an honor for me to be here today and be a part of this very important event. Though we can't be together for this breakfast this morning, I'd like to invite you to share your cup. Enjoy this this morning. Take a selfie and let us know what you're doing. Use the hashtag, hashtag HB share your cup on your social media. We have many generous sponsors to thank for their support of today's event. They include Snell and Wilmer, Henry and Horn, Mayo Clinic, Equality Health Foundation, Vision Link, Schuster Printing and Marketing, Multimedia Communications LLC, Dignity Health, and Fast Turtle Digital. We also want to thank Virginia G. Piper Charitable Trust and the Arizona Community Foundation for COVID-19 emergency funding that we will use to support our communities in need. My firm has been working with Esperanza for the past year or so, and I came to know them a little bit better when I hosted the screening event for their Visionaries feature, which is being aired on PBS starting later this month. I am not kidding you, I was blown away by the work Esperanza does and the impact it has both here in Phoenix and internationally. I think you'll see exactly what I mean. It's impressive. Uh, these are unprecedented times we find ourselves in right now, and we need organizations like Esperanza who will stand adapt and respond to the changing needs in our community and around the world. During this time of uncertainty, they have continued to do just that. As an example of that responsiveness is how Esperanza quickly worked to repurpose the $8,000 deposit it had paid to the caterer for this Hope Breakfast when the decision was made to go viral. The funds were used to provide food for seniors in HUD housing and now enjoy a brief video of Delivery Day. I'm Jerry Royce, President and CEO of Esperanza, and today we're gathered at one of the Cesar Chavez Foundation HUD housing to deliver food to our most vulnerable population. Because we were not able to meet in person, we decided that the, the money that we would have used to feed participants at our breakfast can be used to feed this very vulnerable population. These are all seniors. They, they really can't gather together right now. They can't get out of their house safely. And they lack the money and resources to do the kind of shopping and stockpiling that we're all being asked to do. So being able to take money that we were using to essentially feed our donors and feed our uh, recipients, feed our community, is the best possible outcome for a time like today. So we've just finished our deliveries. We have happy residents, happy catering workers, happy Esperanza employees, because we're getting out into the community to do what we do best, and that is serve others. And my message to you is to do the same. Now is the time for us to come together, be supportive of one another, and do what we can to not social distance, but to physically distance. Stay in contact, be in touch with your loved ones, reach out to your friends. Good morning. I'm Jerry Royce, President and CEO of Esperanza. And I have a very important question for you. Do you remember the last time you needed hope? I imagine for most of us, it may have been the last time we listened to the news which left us with more questions than answers. When will this pandemic be over? How many more people will die? Will my family and I stay healthy? Is it safe to go to the grocery store? Will we ever get a vaccine so this will never happen again? Hope is what helps us see beyond the circumstances we are currently experiencing to a better place. <clears throat> I remember needing hope when I was recently divorced, single mother of a three-year-old, and I needed enough money to find a new place to live. That hope came in the form of a neighbor who loaned me $1,000. Not only was I able to move, but I could envision a better life for me and my daughter. And I receive hope every six months when I visit my oncologist and she reports that my scans are clear and I can see a future that is cancer free. 
Esperanza is in the hope business. We provide hope and improve health through disease prevention, education, and treatment for every life we touch. And we envision a world with health, health equity for everyone. We are so proud that just last year, we provided hope to over 50,000 people. Hope delivered through health education, surgery, and community development, including 4,027 children from Title I schools right here in Phoenix who received oral health education and a smile bag. In the era of COVID-19, we have been publishing videos demonstrating the proper way to brush and floss your teeth and showing them on social media. We've also been doing videos for a number of other health-related topics. 400 seniors in Arizona gain new knowledge to better manage their diabetes. And our health educators are now busy calling our seniors once a week to check in, lend support, and identify specific needs they may have. 2,746 families in Nicaragua experienced food and economic security through attending workshops on improving agriculture production and 417 life-transforming surgeries were performed in Nicaragua, Peru, and Ecuador. Of course, all of this was made possible thanks to our Circle of Hope Giving Society members and all of our other very generous donors. I dream of a day when everyone on this planet has hope and sees a future beyond their current circumstance, whatever that may be. In the meantime, Esperanza will continue to serve one person at a time, one family and one community at a time until that dream is a reality. Next year, we are committed to educational outreach in rural Arizona to assist those seniors living in isolated and underserved communities to improve their health through knowledge about nutrition and chronic disease management. We will launch a new program designed specifically for at-risk youth, the future of hope. Participants will gain knowledge about public health issues in their community and learn to serve as role models and advocates. We are committed to doubling the number of free surgeries we can provide over the next three years. In order to accomplish all of this, we need the technology capacity both here and at the host sites in those rural communities to deliver virtual training and coaching for each participant. An additional two community health educators to support the expansion of our health education and new development program. And additional volunteer surgical teams for new specialties to support seven new missions each year. I invite you to join me today in making a difference in someone's life by supporting Esperanza's efforts to provide hope and improve health. Now, I would like to introduce you to the faces of Esperanza so you can hear for yourselves our story through the words of the people we serve. Antes de conocer a, a este grupo de Esperanza, mi vida era, pues no tenía control en la comida, no sabía las calorías, no sabía qué cantidad, no sabía leer las etiquetas de la comida, no sabía tampoco qué tan riesgoso era todo lo del diabetes, qué consecuencias tenía, pues en la salud de mis hijos, en la de mi esposo, en la mía, no sabía qué tan riesgoso era no medir las este, comidas, era un descontrol. Ah, yo me enteré por medio de la escuela de mis hijos, pero gracias a una gran persona que es nuestra coordinadora Evelyn Alvarado, que siempre nos ha motivado y nos ha ayudado a, a tener nuevas metas y a luchar. Mi vida ha cambiado mucho porque yo pesaba 189 libras y ahorita, ahorita peso 166 libras, que fue un gran cambio. Las clases me motivaron mucho. 
estar activa en mi casa, en la comida, en el ejercicio, yo y mis hijos. Ahora sí ya mido porciones, me voy a la tienda, me fijo en las etiquetas, sé agarrar este, comida más saludable, menos carne y más vegetales y más frutas. No tenía un, un control y ahora, ahora que estoy tomando las clases, ya no es difícil porque mi cuerpo ya, ya se acostumbró a, a las cantidades que debe de comer y ahorita ya, ya no es difícil. Yo le doy gracias a este grupo de Esperanza y a todos los que ayudan y nos traen las clases. Y muchas gracias que mi vida ha cambiado, tanto en mi salud como en físico, en mi alimentación. Gracias. La historia de mi hijo. Mi hijo se llama Jeremy Ariel Mayas Pérez. Él tiene 14 años, eh, vive conmigo, estudia, pero lamentablemente tiene un inconveniente en su rodilla. El problema de mi hijo en la rodilla es que él no puede extender, o sea, puede flexionar pero no extender. Se le ha ocasionado una malformación producto de, de, de una fractura, un golpe. Y le da molestia, le da problema, que quisiera correr con toda normalidad y eso no le permite eh, eh, jugar pelota o hacer eh, actividades que él no lo puede hacer con toda normalidad. ¿Cómo descubrí la organización Esperanza? Eh, porque me llamaron de aquí del hospital de Becerra de Guayaquil. Eh, ellos me hicieron la llamada y me avisaron que había una convocatoria el día de domingo. Llegamos, me dieron rápido la cita con el doctor, el doctor me evaluó al niño y, y fue algo rápido, me dijo, Dios los ilumina al momento que están en un quirófano para cambiar la vida de tus hijos. Muy agradecida con los doctores, con el Hospital León Becerra por permitirnos a nosotros poder participar de este proyecto, poder ser parte de esta fundación que ayuda a mucha gente. No va a ser motivo de burla para nadie, y va a mejorar su calidad de vida, va a poder trabajar con normalidad, estudiar con normalidad, hacer cosas que no hacía, eh, va a tener su vida normal, va a poder compartir y reírse al igual que todos. Y van a mejorar la calidad de vida de, de sus niños, de, de todos los seres humanos a los cuales ellos meten su, su mano. La fe muy montana, ya muy agradecida con ellos, con los doctores, con el doctor Castillo, con el hospital, porque permite que este tipo de proyectos se lleve a cabo. Siempre está bajando el agua, un año en año está bajando. Por eso hemos hecho nosotros reforestación acá al este. Al lado de Ojo del Agua está reforestado ya. Ese es para mantener el agua, ¿no? El agua es importancia para todo, es consumo humano para nosotros. Sin agua no se puede vivir nosotros. Es para planta y para nosotros y para los animales. Para el CADEP el partenariado, el partnership que mantenemos con, con Fundación Esperanza es muy importante. A través de ellos y gracias a ellos es que estamos pudiendo atender a la población más vulnerable, población que no tiene recursos económicos, población que está sufriendo mucho los temas de cambio climático, está sufriendo mucho la presencia de empresas mineras que están vulnerando sus derechos, están vulnerando sus modos de vida, sus estilos de vida y es a través de Esperanza que podemos implementar proyectos para llegar a esa población que de otra manera no tendría cómo mejorar sus modos de vida. Ah, antes, con este, antes de CADEF, cuando no, no estaba acá, este, estábamos desorganizados, no estábamos más capacitados del agua, cómo utilizar y también así verduras no, no teníamos mucho. Ahora como nos ha dado alfalfa, así también tenemos alfalfa para el cuy, también este verdura también nos ha dado, entonces ya sabemos cómo plantar, eso también nos ha capacitado. El agua es el... más que todo se preocupa del agua, por eso hay veces nos da en tubos, también así accesorios nos ha dado para arreglar, ¿no? Donde, donde se reventa el tubo, ¿no? Chaibañan, que hay planta con una pizca verde, Chaibañan trabaja, Chaico. 
Ñawpaqtaqa manan tanto chayna mana uno kaqtinqa manan allintachu llank'aypis kara. Ripulla paskunanqa unuwanqa hatunkunatan kush. Chay paskaq kallanta wawakunapaq allin wiñananpaq. Ihinallataq animiapaq kan qomer chakunaq lipin qomer pas mas que todo wiñananpaq animiapaq ayna kan. Chaykunata ruwallaykutaq riki. Y naturalmente mana no hay que ruwaykuchu abunuwanchu. Natural, yo voy a echar a Paco y Cota, Joaquinta, Mercadoma, y mi conaico Pacán, voy a comer con Chenaico Pacamanaña, Plaza Mantaña Churanti Mico. Este, antes no había ni agua, ni así, no han crecido verduras, pero ahora siempre hay agua ya. Gracias, Esperanza, Octavara, a Pachimaico, Alin, Yancaico Nat. <laughs> Hello, my name is Maria Valenzuela and I am the director of the domestic program filling in for Liz Miranda. Unfortunately, Liz had a family emergency and is unable to be with us today but her story is so powerful, we want to make sure you get to hear it. Liz Miranda is the Regional Program Coordinator for the Cesar Chavez Foundation, Senior HUD Facilities in Phoenix, Arizona, a nonprofit organization serving families in low-income communities. I'm going to read her testimonial as she would. By promoting lifestyle changes through programs like Salud con Sabor Latino, diabetes self-management, and oral health education, Esperanza has helped our residents improve their health and quality of life. Our seniors gain knowledge on proper nutrition, maintaining an active lifestyle, which has improved their well-being. I would like to share a story of a wonderful resident living in one of our communities. Claudina came to my office one day, desperate looking for help. Claudina had a medical condition which required the use of an insomnia bag. Without insurance, there was no way for her to afford them and she had been using plastic grocery bags to manage her condition. Because of the problems she faced, she had become very depressed and had isolated herself from her loved ones and her friends. Her life had changed. I assured her I would do my best to help her. However, I didn't know where to begin. I know about all these resources, but who do I reach out to about this? I had heard of this condition before. I had never heard of this condition before. This bothered me. My job is to help connect people to resources, and I didn't know who to connect her to. Time went by, and one day, like an answer to a prayer, I was talking to a health educator from Esperanza, who spoke the words I needed to hear. We might be able to help. A few days later, I received a call that Esperanza had the supplies Claudina needed and was able to deliver them the very next day. My words cannot best describe how grateful and happy Claudina was to receive these supplies from Esperanza and what a difference it made to her. Through tears, she said, you have given my life back and life has indeed changed for Claudina. She is now happy, confident, and loves to be out with friends and loved ones and participating in our community events. Esperanza continues to deliver donated medical supplies to our communities, including the supplies that Claudina needs. Esperanza helps us take care of our vulnerable and most often forgotten seniors. I don't know what we or residents like Claudina would do without Esperanza. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Michelle Abrams and I'm an occupational therapist and a certified hand therapist at Mayo Clinic here in Arizona. I grew up in a family that did volunteer work together. My parents, they taught me to give back. When I was given the opportunity to participate in mission work in Ecuador, in Ecuador with Esperanza, I jumped at the chance. Fortunately, my husband was supportive of me and he was willing to hold down our crazy fort with three small children so that I could go. That trip changed my life in ways that I never dreamed. As I was preparing for the trip, I was charged with developing patient education handouts as well as some education to provide to the hospital staff in Ecuador. When coming up with the topics, I was told stick with the basics. It took some time for me to figure out the enormity of that statement, stick with the basics. I would be going to a country 
with surgeons from the United States who were providing life-altering surgeries to patients that would otherwise not be able to undergo those procedures, either due to a lack of financial resources or really due to the lack of the abilities of their local healthcare professionals. On that mission trip to Ecuador, I met David Alejandro, an adorable six-year-old, badly burned in a house fire whose arms were so severely burned that he was unable to bend at his elbows enough to feed himself nor pull up his own pants. I had the opportunity to get to know Laura, a woman who had a tremendous amount of pain, stiffness and swelling in her entire arm following a wrist fracture from two years before. And I had the privilege of working with Adolfo, a 43-year-old father of three who had severed a primary nerve in his right wrist that left him with an enormous amount of pain and a total lack of function in that dominant hand. These people had lost not only function, but they had also lost hope. They, along with so many others, went in for truly transformational surgeries that week, and here I was, tasked to stick to the basics. So I did. I focused on how to control swelling following an injury or surgery. As many of you know, if swelling lasts following an injury, the result is more pain, more stiffness, less movement, and essentially less function. I created handouts for the patients and nursing staff, and I wrote a lecture in Spanish that I gave to the medical school students at the hospital in Ecuador. I taught every patient and every nurse that I encountered to reach for the stars and pretend to be Superman in order to control their swelling. So while the surgeons and their team in the operating room were providing these amazing surgical procedures that were changing lives, I was in the recovery room helping to support the everyday basics. In addition to working to control swelling, I was also busy up until the very last moment, literally, before we headed to the airport making splints and casts for people to be worn after their surgeries and developing home programs that they could complete well after we had lost, left town. I had the great fortune of watching David Alejandro, Laura and Adolfo along with the others come out from recovery from their surgeries. Their eyes were full of gratitude and promise for their own future. Their hope, it was no longer lost. Their smiles and words of appreciation from both them and their families were palpable and sincere. As I walked out of the hospital on the last day, my colleague and I walked through the recovery room that housed 18 people all recovering from surgeries that are surgeons had provided over the course of the week. These incredibly appreciative patients blew kisses and shouted praises to us, and then they proceeded to reach for the stars and pretend to be Superman. The basics that they learned from me that would help them on that day and with any surgery or injury to come. At that moment, as of right now, I cried and I knew that I had done something very important. As one of the surgeons told me on that trip, we have a unique gift that very few have in which we can travel to any corner of the globe and provide a tangible service that someone out there will desperately need and would not be getting otherwise. This mission work changed my life. I came home appreciating what I have and took great pride in the gift that I can ha offer as a hand therapist. I was an example to my eight, nine, and 11-year-old children and feel so blessed that I have passed along the tradition of giving back that my parents taught me Please join me today in supporting Esperanza and give the opportunity for others like myself to give back and for patients to stick to the basics and reach for their own stars. Thank you. Thanks to both of you for those great and truly inspirational stories. Good morning. My name is David Schlinkert and I am an Esperanza board member. My, my connection to Esperanza comes from my appreciation for health equity. Growing up, I had really bad asthma. I mean, really bad asthma. I was hospitalized several times, and even had a lung partially collapse. I didn't think much about the structural health care systems that enabled me to receive care as a kid. But after I spent some time traveling internationally and working with low-income, recently arrived immigrant populations, I realized how fortunate I was to grow up in a place where I had access to high-quality health care. Not everyone even in Arizona, has the ability to seek the care they need. And this is where Esperanza comes in. Esperanza inspires me because they provide hope, health, and healing to people in Arizona and around the world so that everyone can achieve their full potential. Today, it is my privilege to ask you to help us grow our giving society, the Circle of Hope. To further inspire you, it is my great honor to announce today a special $25,000 leadership gift which has been made by our newest board members. 
Some of you who are attending today attended this event last year and pledged your support. We would like, you to ask, we would like to ask you to consider paying your pledge early and or increasing the amount of your pledge. Note there's a special section on page two of the pledge card for you. Now I'd like to ask you to take the pledge card and pre-addressed envelope out of the participant packet you should have received in the mail. If you registered too late to receive a packet, we emailed the pledge card to you. We're also going to show the pledge card on the screen as I go through it. In addition, you can donate by texting HOPE2020 to 5151 or visit our website, www.esperanza.org. So starting at the top of the card, the Circle of Hope Giving Society pledge level names are meant to give you a sense of what your contribution can do. Your contribution will go toward the unrestricted operating funds of Esperanza. The first giving level, Hope for One Life, is a pledge of $1,000 each year for five years, which is approximately $83 per month. As an example, a gift of this level would support two seniors in Phoenix to attend a class and learn how to manage their diabetes and provide support calls for one year. The next giving level, our Hope for a Family level, is a pledge of $10,000 a year for five years. A gift at this level would fully fund a surgical mission to Peru, Nicaragua, or Ecuador. The last level, Hope for a Community, is a pledge of $25,000 a year for five years, and it would fund a community health educator in Phoenix to expand our educational services, serving another 3,000 people, including new, a new program designed for at-risk youth. Anything you give can help, and thank you so much for your generous gifts. For those of you who may prefer to give at a different level, on the next line, please tell us how much you would like to give and for how many years. If your gift is for 1,000 or more for five years, you'll become a member of the Circle of Hope Giving Society. Whatever level of support you can provide, we ask that you make their first payment on your pledge today. Perhaps you have some great ideas for us. If so, please check the next box that says, please contact me, I have some thoughts to share. Before we wrap up the program, let me say on behalf of everyone at Esperanza, including the men, women, and children we serve every day, thank you. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you for joining us to listen, learn, and to contribute your valuable time to be with us this early morning. We sincerely appreciate you all. I'll give you a few minutes now to finish filling out your pledge cards. You can return it to us by mail or by email. If you'd rather give online, please, again, text HOPE2020 to 51555 or go directly to our website, www.esperanza.org. On behalf of everyone here at Esperanza, we want to say thank you for attending and for all of your generous support today. We hope you will share with others what you have learned and heard today. Thanks again, and have a great day.